This is my homemade electronic drum set. I call it the Coltronics Kit E, or Kitty, and it's kind of a wink to the drum cat controller. I built it a number of years ago, but it still works pretty good, and I thought you'd be interested in how I put it all together. I'm driving an Alesis DM5 drum module here. Uh, I'll get to that in a minute, but I wanted to talk about the other end of the equation. This is the heart of it right here. It's called a piezoelectric transducer. They come in uh, various different sizes, and what they do is convert physical energy into electrical energy and vice versa. They're used for speakers, buzzers, pressure sensors, and whatnot. Now, if you hit it, it'll generate an electrical pulse, the strength of which is determined by how hard it's hit, and that's what makes it a basic component for most drum triggers. Now, I made this model here in SketchUp to show you what's on the inside in a cutaway view. What you see here are most of the tin trigger assemblies that sit under a sheet of 16th inch neoprene. These tin assemblies are each made out of 8th inch thick aluminum plate and then covered with 8th inch thick gum rubber. Uh, and that's to provide a little stick bounce. They're surrounded by this green window shape here. That's half inch foam rubber and that keeps the uh, trigger assemblies physically isolated from one another so that you don't set off one trigger when you hit an adjacent one. Now here on the underside you can see a model of the transducers and they're attached to the aluminum plate with hot glue and, that, and that's for easy replacement even though I've really never had one fail. I glued and taped down the leads as well as you can see here. Now on the corner of the plates, I attach spacers to get the assemblies up to half inch thick. And that's so they'll sit flush within the foam rubber window. Now all these assemblies sit on a piece of half inch foam rubber. And again, that's to absorb uh, the vibration. Then all of that sits on a piece of one inch thick styrofoam. And there's a notch cut out in the back of it. And that's to make room for the phone jacks and for the wire connections themselves. And then I made the bottom plate out of the uh, plate aluminum as well. I didn't show the wiring in this model, but here's a little peek inside. And you can see here the wire leads fed through slits cut in the foam rubber. Now on for the connections. So I've got here 10 triggers on the drum box, plus the bass drum pedal, plus the hi-hat trigger pad, plus the hi-hat pedal. And that's a total of 13 triggers in all. And plus they each have a ground lead, which uh, I gang together. And so that'd make a total of 14 wires. Now I wanted a clean way of getting all these connections back to my drum brain. And uh, here's what I came up with. It's called a DB25 jack. There's 25 available connections. I found a cable that'd work with this DB25 connector. And it's called parallel pass-through. And what that means is the pin out on both sides are the same. Apparently, there's some DB25 cables that have an internal crossover, and I didn't want to have to deal with that. I made this back plate to accept the DB25 connector, as well as the bass drum pedal, and the hi-hat trigger, and the hi-hat pedal. I also wired in these two female jacks so that I could plug in uh, two external pads, or let's say I wanted to get a, a mesh head pad that's a dual trigger pad, I could plug that in. And they just use two of the leads that I normally have associated with uh, two of the onboard triggers. Now here's my bass pedal setup. The pedal itself is standard, but what I did was to throw a uh, bend in the beater shaft so that I could mount it upside down, and that way it strikes down onto this trigger assembly. It's a little smaller version of my trigger pads, and it's different in that the gum rubber is on the bottom side, and that's what holds it in place in this built-up plywood base. The plywood base is attached to a piece of plastic display board, and I glued a piece of office floor mat to that, the kind that has the little spikes in it, and that keeps the uh, pedal from sliding around on the carpet. Now the hi-hat pedal is just a standard keyboard sustain pedal. For my hi-hat pad, I found this Yamaha ride bell trigger at a music store swap mate. I like its compact size. I originally made my own hi-hat trigger using the Remo practice pad as the shell, but this trigger pad's a little more elegant in design, so I went with that. For the other end of my cable run, I made a breakout box that sits here in the back of my studio rack. It's got a DB25 connection on one side of the box, and then the other side splits back into individual phone jacks for each of the inputs on the Alesis unit. So at any rate, that's about it. I like its compact design. It just sits here on a snare drum stand. Uh, it plays well. It looks pretty cool. Uh, it cost me about a hundred bucks or so to make the materials, and that's not including the regular drum hardware. 
So uh, thanks for watching the video, and uh, I hope it might give you some ideas if you're thinking about making your own electronic drums.